This is a message to all my supporters of this podcast. I'm introducing a new supporters program. You can contribute a small amount as a one-off payment to show your love for this podcast. Thank you in advance for all your contributions. Hi, this is the Absolute Business Mindset Podcast, hosted and created by Mark Hayward. I am a corporate employee with an entrepreneurial mindset. This podcast will help and support you with new ideas about business. These are my thoughts, ideas and comments. Today, I'm talking about two of my favorite autobiographies. Hi, this is the Absolute Business Mindset Podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about two of my favorite autobiographies. Um, I do a lot of reading and listening to uh, to autobiographies and also to uh, business books. So um, just thought it'd be good to catch up with two of the best autobiographies that I have listened to recently. Um, they are the second Richard Branson um, autobiography, Finding My Virginity. And then one that I've really enjoyed recently is Shoe Dog, a memoir um, of Phil Knight of Nike. So um, just wanted to have a quick chat about those today. The first one is uh, Richard Branson I'm going to talk about. And this really is just a really nice insight into the type of businessman that Richard Branson is. Um, we all know from his first book a lot about his stunts and uh, a lot of his uh, taking his life in his own, uh, it, being able to do these extraordinary things uh, like the balloon rides. The second one, that uh, what's called Finding My Virginity, is a lot more, um, he's a little bit older, so it's the second phase of his uh, life. Um, he talks a lot about his business and how he creates uh, a business um, equally which I found really interesting he kind of isn't precious about his business if it's the right choice to sell he will sell um, and that was really that was really uh, not refreshing but it was really insightful because he was quite like like sensible and sort of like this is the right choice to be able to sell our business um at this time at this price so the virgin brand now um, cuts across um various other businesses that he does not own um but i found it really interesting um the the australian uh airline industry was was really fascinating and i found it really interesting hearing his sort of love for the air, airline industry um as his baby basically and that's why i don't think he will give up the uh the the transatlantic uh business but um but saying that he has been in everything you can think of virgin coke which didn't last but virgin media virgin um the 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 credit cards uh the the airline industries the the trains he was very 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 uh, upset about the treatment that he had um to do with the rail line industry um and how he got cut uh, at the last moment but then about i think it was like eight years later he then won the the contract which was a great relief and a great pleasure for him to do as well so um it's a really really fascinating book um he still does these stunts um there's a story of him abseiling i can't remember what he was abseiling but he abseiled down something and, and ended up bashing up his leg and his arm um and um and and also the thing the other other thing that really uh inspired me uh so much so that i think i'm going to do a challenge this year was his challenges that he does uh for uh physically so he has done various things with his sons and daughters um we were, where there was a a, a swimming a, a triathlon style event where he swum and he uh, uh uh cycled and and run as well now he's 70 70 something i think he is um really tr truly truly impressive um he talks a lot about e uh, exercise as being a good catalyst for his businesses he 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 now lives on necker island permanently and uh interestingly he plays tennis every day uh for an hour um so a lot of these people that you hear the hustlers and the the, the people that are the 4am club this guy sensibly wakes up at i don't know probably about six i would imagine and plays a game of tennis a um, couple of sets so you, you're talking probably an hour hour and a half um, but he talks a lot about the exercise being a, a big catalyst for his 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 entire his, 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 his attitude um to why he does it what he does so um 
I would definitely advocate you listening to this um, and and getting inspired. There's a lot of inspiring stories um, and um, really, 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 really interesting. So uh, that's the first one um, that I would definitely promote you to listen to or read. Uh, The second one is the story of Phil Knight of Nike. Now, this I I read fairly recently and it was really, really fascinating. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, actually. Um, Obviously, I'd grown up with Nike, um, but Nike really, when it was at its earliest, where it was a a West Coast uh, US a business, where it, it, there was a business before uh, Nike, uh, which was initially was sending Tiger trainers from Japan into uh, West Coast um US. And it's really interesting, an entrepreneur in a time with startups when there weren't startups, uh, everyone now wants to be an entrepreneur and everyone wants to um, be the best startup with, be a unicorn, which is the most absurd name. Uh, my daughters would love it if I had a unicorn business. Um, but um, he, 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 he talks a lot about the growing of a business and investing in the inventory and taking very little cut from his his businesses and basically just keeping them going by uh, he had trouble with banks in the 60s and 70s um, a lot of them wanted to to scale back and have a bit in the bank and he obsessively uh, ignored them so much so that there was some pretty tight tight deadlines and tight time frames of paying back loans and things um that he struggled with because uh, he had all his inventory or all, all of his shoes that he was then building when it was Nike in the second phase of the story. And um, he talks a lot about um, building a business from, from the roots up. And this is literally in your, in your front bedroom with trainers when trainers weren't really a thing. So it's great to hear the sort of birth of the train. Now, obviously there were, there were businesses like Adidas who was a big competitor with his, um, who, who had more of an established business. Um, but it's really, really fascinating. Um, not massive trainer fans and wear them for, um, for, for, for my exercise. Um, but the, the, he, he was originally there for running and for jogging and for exercise. And I, I think it's fascinating how, um, he brought something that was niche. And when he got into Nike and started advertising with people, his, his business, his branding was almost incredible before it even began the sort of ideas of branding and having, having, um, individual sportsmen or musicians whatever it is being there and uh and sort of um sharing his experiences because i think he added a great deal of value and just just to really i think it would be an inspiring story for a new entrepreneur um who who's cut their cloth as a 18 year old that wants to be able to start a business as a startup it really was a like all in constantly all in to get that business to the mega status that it is. He talks very fondly about his relationships with uh, Michael Johnson and Tiger Woods. Um, and I thought it was really fascinating that the, the evolution of a brand the evolution of, of a business, um, his, his, his involvement of key people that he brought in, um, and, and he acquired and found, um, that were, were really critical in a, and that, that whole, starting a business with your key people now there might be your mates they might not be in his case there was one that was quite an obsessive um who had troubles with the relationships early on but then grow grew to grew together and, and grew the business together so um critical important people in the, in his business getting the right people there and equally to have the right support from his fr- from his friends and family it was critical um I just think this is an all-round fascinating book on how to do a business long term. Like not this was this was old school. This was not getting venture capital money. This was not this, this was an old style bank giving you x amount of dollars to buy as much inventory as you can and keep it just in the in 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 the black and uh just a really really fascinating um story um both these these business stories are, are fascinating because you 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 get to understand the ins- 
inspiration, the, the, the desire, the constant innovation. Both these people are truly innovative for completely different ways. Some, some to do with branding, some to do with, with, with products, with services. Um, I listen and read a lot of business books, uh, autobiographies. I think I need to get a little deeper in some of some more of these. I think they're truly fascinating and um, truly inspiring as well. So um, I would advise all of you uh, to check out um, Richard Branson's second autobiography. Even try the first one. The first one's very interesting as well. And equally, uh, Shoe Dog uh, from uh, Phil Knight. Um, really, really fascinating, really, really interesting. And would definitely, as an entrepreneur and equally as a businessman, would be a fascinating read. Thank you very much.